One of the differences between men and women is that men will sell anything. Their parents' house, their kids' report card, their body fluids. Men tend to put everything into financial terms. A woman will say, wow, that's beautiful. Whereas a man will say, wow, what did that set you back? Most guys would rather make big bucks doing something they hate than make a comfortable living doing something they love. It's not smart or correct, but it's one of the things that makes us what we are. Time. We're going to show you how to turn a furnace into a popcorn maker to insulate your house. I'm going to be splitting some logs, so I'll get rid of my valuables off the bench. Dougie Frank will be along with a few words of, well, just words. And Bill and I are going into the woods for a big surprise. And now, here's the Ricardo Montalban of Duck Hunting, my uncle, Red Green. Here's the Hervé Villachez of basketball, my nephew Harold. <laughs> Odd thing happened to Junior Simpson this week. Uh, a couple from the city come right up to his front door, offered him 200 bucks for his wood pile. <laughs> a wood pile is covered in ants. What'd they want that thing for? Junior didn't ask, Harold. Once he heard 200 bucks, that pretty much ended the discussion. <laughs> he just grabbed the money and started throwing the wood into the car, which wasn't all that easy. They had two phones in there. Why would you have two phones in your car, Harold? Well, one might be a fax line. Of course, you know, you might have two lines and one phone. You know, that way you can talk to two people at one time. Yeah. Oh, you know what else? If you had that call waiting, four people at one time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, conference calling, conference calling. He has that. He could hook up everybody all together at one time. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if you have two phones, you don't need any friends, right? Basically, yes. You should look into that yourself, Harold. <laughs> I was wondering about city people buying firewood, but apparently now with a lot of these condos, they have a fireplace in the living room or the dining room or even the bedroom. There's a sad commentary when you got to heat up your bedroom by sticking something in the wall. <laughs> Uncle Red, these are majorly successful people. We're talking about movers and shakers here. Oh, well, we have movers and shakers at the lodge. No, no, they're more like waddlers and twitchers. <laughs> I'm talking about people with money, people we should have here at the lodge. No, wait a minute, Harold. All we want to do is sell them every stick of firewood we can get our hands on. We want their money, not their company. <laughs> it's no wonder the tourist industry's dying a death around here. That's the way I like it. If you get tourists and sightseers, you got to have sights for them to see, and next thing you know, you're talking quaint. You know how I feel about quaint. <laughs> I'd rather just rake in as much money as we can, and that's what we're going to do with this firewood thing. Oh, yeah, okay. Well, then there won't be any trees left. Who cares? We'll have enough money to buy more. <laughs> Uh, excuse me, but uh, would the owner of a 1964 Pontiac Strato Chief just uh, come and get me when he wants to leave? I just got to get my monster truck down off it. <laughs> Trapper Jack was hunting bear, a dangerous hobby at best. They brought him back to the doctor in town, and he was a heck of a mess. There was some assembly required, mostly teeth and bones and hair. Jack had always been good with the knife, but unfortunately, not quite as good as the bear. <laughs> well, you're gonna end up on the couch this time. Yeah. She's taking a night course making crafts, created a dried flower arrangement, hung it on the wall, and you said, well, that looks silly. <laughs> the three words you should never say to the woman you love for any reason. Don't ever say something looks silly to a woman Ever. Well, I'm sure it's a bunch of dried weeds and flowers and sticks, painted gold, jammed into a hunk of green foam. <laughs> Something you'd sweep off the laneway. <laughs> but you went and you called it silly, and now we're going to help Billy out. Now, you tell her you've got an optometrist appointment. You come home an hour later, acting like you got new glasses. Make a special point of looking at her dried kindling thingy again. <laughs> you say something like, Oh, I see it now. <laughs> what was I thinking of? I like that. Yeah, I really like the way the big things are crushing the little things there. And, uh, is that the real ragweed on that? By golly, that is, that is an attractive unit there. What say we take down the picture of the dogs playing poker and pop that baby up there? <laughs> you don't want to go overboard, though. It makes her suspicious. No, no, that's right. That's right. Actually, maybe give it a little bit of time. She'll start building something maybe be half decent, you know? 
Or she may give it up altogether, go back to playing bingo and make some money. <laughs> either way, you win. Just give it a little time. Yeah, never say that anything she does is silly. No, otherwise she might mention that spice rack you built her. <laughs> or that new fishing hat. Or that silly lodge you joined. <laughs> Well, this week, with the guys all out there cutting down trees and chopping them up in the firewood, I thought I'd take the handyman corner and teach you all how to split logs. Okay, first thing you want to do is uh, stand the log up straight on a, on a flat surface there. And, uh, of course, you want to clear all the stuff out of the way that's around the thing. Oh, yeah. You take a full swing with an axe and come down on something like a vice and the hair will stand up so far on the back of your neck you can card wool on it. <laughs> all right, we're all set to go here. All right, now, you always want to make sure the area behind you is cleared out as well. <laughs> yep, we're fine. <laughs> and... <laughs> All right, uh, let's try that again. Okay. <sighs> now... That's the way you want to play it, huh? All right. <laughs> There's actually a safer and uh, more upscale way to split firewood, and that is to take something here, which is called a, a wedge, from the Latin word wedgie, which means to split or rent asunder. <laughs> so you just uh, get that started into the log. happened there is that somehow my thumb managed to get in between the hammer and the wedge, which is actually not a good place for a thumb to be. But one of the signs of a true handyman is his ability to control his temper. Right now I'm feeling pretty darn proud of myself. <laughs> Mind you, there's always room for improvement. Coming up, got Bill out in the woods, making some kind of trouble. And Ranger Gord's got a brand new game. Well, Operation Firewood is off to a flying start. Got all the axes sharpened up. <laughs> and we're going through chainsaw gas like the recession's over. Well, I hope you're being respectful of the environment and cutting down trees that only need to be removed due to disease and death and the proper thinning of a forest. Well, we're using the 100 to 1 ratio, Harold. For every 100 oak trees, we only cut down one. I only wish I had 100 nephews. <laughs> Well, let's not forget our safety precautions, Uncle Red. Steel-toed boots, protective eyewear, and tying off the trees so they fall correctly. Too much work, Harold. The trees don't grow over 60 feet tall, so we stand 70 feet apart. <laughs> that way, every man gets his own tree. You don't have some goof coming in at the last minute and finishing her off when you did all the work to get her that close. <laughs> well, how many trees do you plan to assault? 50 a day, every day, day after day, until we're too tired to do anymore. <laughs> wow, I'll give you a grand total of 50. <laughs> You're all in there, Harold? All right, we're here with our friend, Ranger Gord. Hi, Red. Hi, Harold. Yeah, hi there, Gord. Uh, Gord, we're getting kind of bogged down with the firewood uh, project there. I wonder if you could do us a favor, go out into the woods and make a little X on all the trees that are easy to cut down. Let's do that. <laughs> well, that sounds like you need to know more about the flora. Oh, no, no. I know flora. Everybody knows flora, right, Gord? <laughs> 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 No, I mean the flora in the woods. And you can learn all about the flora in the woods by playing this new game I invented called Gravitat. You get it? You get it? Gravitat, because you reach in and you grab something from your habitat. I don't want to play some dumb game, Gord. I want to go cut down trees. Play one game and I'll mark ten trees for you. Deal. Gravitat is fun. You just reach in and you pull something out. And if you can identify it, it's worth five points. Okay, that's fine. Five points for me. Your turn, Red. All right, Let's see what we got in here. There we go. It's a, I guess that'd be a stick, right? Up the dogwood. What's so funny about dogwood? Smell it. <laughs> 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 oh, that's funny. You know, because you, you want your game to be funny if you want it to be popular. Uh -huh. You know, I think this is going to be a great hit with the kids because they can learn all about the environment. I'm going to sell it at all those stores that sell earth shoes. <laughs> okay. I'm 
minute. That's Sumac. Five points for me. Your turn, Brett. No problem. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I know this one. That's mint. No, it's not. No, it's not mint. Well, I've seen that leaf before. <laughs> All right, you got me. What is it? Poison ivy. <laughs> <laughs> This is the home renovation feature uh, where we show you how to make your house more homely. And uh, this here, of course, is Mike. Mike helps us out with these uh, parts of the show. Well, Mr. Green, he sure helped me out. He just saved my life, is all. Now, Mike is with the, you know, one of the prisoner rehab deal things. This man is a saint. That's all I'm going to say about it. <laughs> okay, uh, we're going to show you a great way to uh, insulate your home. Yeah, that's it, Mike. Yeah, now, you to hear about uh, vermiculite and the foam and the fiberglass and so on. Uh, what we like is the industrial-grade popcorn. <laughs> and uh, it's got a high R factor, you know. Low in cholesterol. Absolutely right. And all you have to do is use the, the heating system in your house to blow... No, 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 no. To blow this stuff up into the exterior walls. So the first step is to take the end panel off your furnace. Yeah. <clears throat> Here, I'll show you how it's done. Uh, Hey, I'm learning, eh? No, I, I, said the, I said the end panel here, Mike. <laughs> oh, geez, I can't believe it. It's oh, I'm sorry. No, no, it's all right. It's all right. All right. I don't know how I'll get this back on. No, no, no problem. Don't worry about it. Now, what you want to do here is to turn your furnace into a hot air popcorn popper. You've got to take a wad of the handyman's secret weapon duct tape. And uh, you want to just ball that up around the, uh, the fan belt there so that uh, when she gets going, she'll vibrate up on you. And that way, uh, the kernels won't burn too bad in the heating chamber. I get it. You know? <laughs> one, 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 one. Stick it. Yeah. You know, keep, right? Yeah, right. keep sticking to it, Sal. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we'll just use some rope. Here, you pull it. Yeah, all right. Yeah, okay. I'll take it. <laughs> Why don't I come through this way? Oh, I think it, it came around the other way. It's all right. All right. All right. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. You got it. There we are. Right. Oh, oh, hold on. This, this is working against me somehow. <laughs> How much duct tape have we got? Two more ducks. <laughs> This will all make sense at a later date, I promise. <laughs> all right, now the uh, popper's going to come through all the floor vents, so you want to oh. take the covers off of all of this. Oh, that's all right. Oh, sorry. Oh, jeez. You okay? Yeah, yeah fine, <laughs> All right, now what you want to do is cut a hole in the wall about eight inches above the floor and line these two right up so that the popcorn can continue right on up and go up and fill up your exterior wall. So what you need is a little bit of temporary duct work, and you know what you can use is a, a boot box like this, cut the ends out of it, and then it's long enough to join up the two holes. You, you should cut the ends out. Yeah. Of it. I cut the sides off. Sir. Yeah, that's... Uh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of short. Yeah. <laughs> I'm useless. Well, <laughs> useless. Well, uh, uh, we, we'll come back when later in the show. We'll get her all rigged up. You're all right. You're all right. Useless. <laughs> Time for adventures with Bill out in the woods. Where else? Where are you, Bill? Where are you? Well, he's around somewhere. Yeah, there he is. Wow, look at all those axes. With the Pick Your Own Firewood project and so on, Bill uh, decided he was going to kind of show us how to do things and uh, cut stuff up and, uh, and I guess how to throw an axe from one end of the woods to the other. Okay, Bill, we've seen that. Uh, you had the other axes. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bill doesn't get a lot done in a day, I guess, when he's working in the lumbering. He's kind of a lumbering guy. You'd think that he... Anyway, uh, you got the other axe. Uh, Bill, what about the other axes? Yeah, good idea, good idea, Bill. So we got the other axes, and oh, there we go, and I uh, wonder where the other one went anyway. Who knows? Oh, there it is, there it is. Well, that's handy. Now, the thing about uh, doing work like cutting up uh, logs and everything, you gotta make it fun. That's the trick of it. Bill, listen, now you gotta, you know, in 
there we go. And uh, you turn it into a sport. I think it was Mary Poppins who said, you know, just a spoonful of swinging an axe makes your leg go down or something like that. I forget. But, you know, and rather than just chop up the log, get right up. Get, oh, 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 yeah. Get right up there on top of it, you know, and just, and you could sing one of those lumberjack tunes and just kind of get yourself into a real good thing. And boy, that is big fun. <laughs> All right, some parts of it are maybe aren't as enjoyable as uh, some of the others. I'm sure he's fine. Apparently, you don't need all your toes. <laughs> and uh, Bill cars, cars cutting that up, and you know, it's, uh, I'll tell you, it's good for you. It's, uh, you get in terrific condition, I would think, if you did this on a regular basis. Because uh, we're hacking away there while we're having a good time. We're feeling good. I don't think we've had this much fun in the woods uh, since the fire. There we go. There we go. There's, there's the secret. Yeah, 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 that's progress. And Bill cuts it right down there, and I didn't feel good about cutting her all the way through because uh, it was his own chainsaw. So he thought what he'd do is just finish her off with an axe. Kind of a purist, Bill, is But unfortunately, she wedged her, wedged right in there. Can't get her out. So now what do we do? We're running short on axes here. So Bill's got an idea. He figures if uh, we each get on each end of the log and start bouncing, you know, with the weight and so on, it'll be able to spring that axe right out of there. It didn't sound like that would work to me. But... I didn't feel like uh, thinking of anything else, so away we go, and uh, it's, it's certainly split. Uh, oh, yeah, there we go. It's working. What about the axe, though? Did the axe come out? Yes, it did. There we go. Uh, coming up, we got Winston Rothschild, king of the hosers. And don't worry, we got the popcorn insulation project totally under control. Well, there doesn't seem to be an easy way to turn trees into firewood. Our window of opportunity is closing fast. Carpe diem, Uncle Red. What? Carpe diem. <laughs> seize the day. And you're close, Harold. I seize the chainsaw. <laughs> I think we're going at this all wrong. I think the profit is in selling the raw materials, not in marking up the labor costs. <laughs> Woo! I've never heard you speak in business terms before. Well, we don't have a business relationship, Harold. With you, it's personal. Thank you. So I'm going to plan B. Harold, tell me this. What do people from the city like to do most? Uh, uh drive silver color German cars. No, 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 okay, I know this one. It's, uh, uh, uh pay too much money for clothes. <laughs> no, you know what it is? I know what it is. It's by mutual funds. <laughs> okay, I don't know. Pick your own strawberries, Harold. No, 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 Harold, Harold. That's what people from the city like to do. Pick strawberries? Not the strawberries. The picking. They like coming up here and pretending they're farmers. Pick your own peaches, pick your own apples. Why not pick your own firewood? You gotta give them a pretty big basket. <laughs> no, no, no. You just take the 300 bucks, hand them an ax, get them to sign an injury waiver, and point them out a tree. A lot of people going home without firewood. Or fingers. I don't think that matters, Harold. I think some of these guys have paid 300 bucks just to wail away at a pine for an hour. They don't get a chance to commune with nature stuck up there in the glass tower behind the steel desk playing with the plastic computer there. So what you're selling then is stress relief. That's right. Where else can you buy therapy by the cord? <laughs> My daughter is watching this show. Your mother and I would like you to come back. Did you know you took my credit card? <laughs> okay, we're back with this week's home renovation project, how to insulate your house using popcorn. Now all the vents near the exterior walls have been hooked up exactly like this. And now the furnace will blow the popcorn up through the temporary vents and into the, in the, in the wall. <laughs> okay, so what you want to do is to close up all the vents that are not on the outside walls. But leave one of them off so that you can pour the popcorn kernels right down into the furnace. I'm supposed to leave this off. Oh, I knew that. Oh, I knew that. No, I'm stupid. We could just stupid. Yeah, we, we could have just. Uh, we could have poured it through the vent. That's fine. That's fine. No, that's fine. You want it back, huh? No, no, that's fine. That'll work. That's great. <laughs> All right. Uh, you you put the you put the popcorn down in there. Okay, I got it now. I'm, I'm sorry, right. Mr. Uh, no, no problem. No problem. I got it. And, uh, once you get the popcorn all in there, you put the, the vent back on and you close her up, eh? Yep. And yep. you've got all the other vents closed yep. up. It's all set. It's all done. That popcorn's in there for life. Er, 25 to life. <laughs> <laughs> well, he would know. All right. And now you lower your thermostat here and you turn her up to 90 or 100 or basically as high as she'll go. <laughs> All right, 
right, uh, once the popping stops, uh, what you want to do is turn your thermostat down to something reasonable. <laughs> then you want to go to the attic and uh, check to make sure that the popcorn has gone to the tops of all the exterior walls. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> You said close off all the vents, you meant the ones upstairs, didn't you? Yeah, well, you pick up the popcorn, I'll go rent us a movie. <laughs> hey, yeah, uh, that uh, Birdman of Alcatraz is pretty funny. For, for sale? Uh, oh, boy. 86 Plim Rely, Fern Will Derve, Fact Air, Custom Pull, AM FM Cast, Blah Heat, Mint Con. Can't Stink Pete, App 6. I've seen that car. <laughs> P crap. <laughs> well, now that we're going ahead with the Pick Your Own Firewood project, we thought we should talk to our resident tycoon to be, Winston Rothschild. How you doing, Winston? Hey, Red. Winston, you'd be awful proud of us up at the lodge. We've finally taken that get up and go business advice of yours. We've applied it to a project that's gonna make us millions. Red, you see what I see when I look in this septic hole? Look, that's my future. And it's swirling around, and it's going right up that hole. <laughs> My old man was right. I'm useless. Oh, come on now, Winston. Don't get down on yourself. I mean, it all started with that genius who invented pick your own fruit, and then it's pick your own vegetables, and chop your own Christmas tree, and, and now you guys are chopping your own firewood. I mean, next it's going to be the final blow. Suck your own sewage. <laughs> And then I'm going to be out of work, walking around with a sign tacked onto some toilet plunger that says, we'll suck holding tanks for food. Oh, geez. I'll tell you, my draining days are numbered. And I'll die in an office job. I hate the smell of air conditioning. Well, now, Winston, if you're right, and everybody's jumping onto this sewage draining bandwagon thing, you could hire yourself out as a consultant. Huh? Oh, you mean like, uh... Rothschild sewage and septic sucking consulting firm? That's the one. Ooh, <laughs> I like the sound of that. Thought you might. Where we know what's coming down the pipe. <laughs> well, the Pick Your Own Firewood project was maybe not quite as successful as we'd hoped. Our first customer was eager to try it, but when we phoned in to check his credit card, they told us he was a convicted murderer. <laughs> we destroyed his credit card, but nobody had the nerve to ask for the axe back. <laughs> So just let me get this correct then. So basically you had no sales and you've lost your axe in the bargain. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, one can assume then that you're out of the firewood business? We're out of the pick your own business, Harold, but the regular firewood sales are just gonna be on hold for a while until the cottagers go back to the city for the winter, at which time we'll have easy access to their wood piles. <laughs> You're gonna steal their firewood? Well, no, it's not. I'm not. I'm not stealing. I'm log brokering. Uh -huh. That's what I'm doing. It's, I'm selling log futures, Harold. Uh, what we do is we protect their wood against the ravages of winter, and then we sell it back to them in the spring. <laughs> oh, well, speaking of rats, <laughs> meeting time, Uncle Red. Yeah, you go ahead. I'll be down for a while, Harold. Hey. If my wife is watching, I'll be coming straight home after the meeting, and I uh, thought maybe we could have a romantic evening around the fire. I'm bringing a load of firewood. It is the pick-your-own style, though, so maybe you could split it while I'm having a bath. <laughs> and to the rest of you, thanks so much for watching, and until next time, on behalf of myself and Harold and the whole gang up here at Possum Lodge, keep your stick on the ice.